Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for another episode of the All To Do Craft Your Life podcast. We are so excited today to have the amazing Mindy Egan join us for a little chat. Welcome, Mindy. Hello. Good morning. How are you on this? Because you're in a cold climate. Is it a cold day for you? It's chilly. It's yeah. chilly. I, I got my uh, sweatshirts going yes. on. So Yeah. We just had our first storm, like sticking snow. So I, I thought you were in a cold climate too. So. Um, our, it snows and then it melts and then it snow. It's kind of been, hasn't really stuck quite yet. Ah, you're lucky it didn't stick. That's lovely. Oh, but that, no, it. We'll get we'll get beat on come January and February. So <laughs> I'm okay. You know, you know it's coming. <laughs> it's coming, yeah. So for folks that I don't know where they would be again, um, that have never heard of Mindy Hegan, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I'm crafter and I craft out of my kitchen. That's kind of always the first thing I always start with is I settled up in the little corner of my kitchen and that is where I do all of my card making, all of my videos and all that fun stuff. Um, I'm in Wisconsin. So that's why we were talking about the weather is I'm <laughs> over in Wisconsin, up over. Um, been crafting for quite a while. I, I, I play around with lots of different things and um, kind of fell into card making. I, I actually kind of started with scrapbooking and, and making little 3D projects when the kids were younger in school. And then I, I kind of just, as they say, drifted over to the dark side. So uh, many started that way though. So many people, yeah. it was, came in through scrapbooking and it, you know, we kind of moved over and migrated to card making. I, yeah. I think it's the smaller surface that's more appealing or the fact it's that you can time. And you can give it away. I mean, like scrapbooking you it's, it's yours. Like you it, yeah. you keep it, you know, it's cards you can actually give away. So that's exciting. Well, I don't know. There's some cards I really don't want to give away. <laughs> Those, some of them I make, I'm like, ooh, who nope. I think I'll just keep it. It's but yeah, no, or you gotta really think of who you're gonna give it to because you want them to appreciate it, you know, if you really if it turned out just that great but yeah scrapbooking it I actually I, you know I think I started with 3d projects more than I did with scrapbooking because I liked making little treat boxes and things like that oh. and so I kind of started that way and then I did scrapbooking for a while um kind of started out as one of those independent consultants yes me too. yeah <laughs> yes. yep well I wanted all the free stuff and I did scrapbooking for a long time. And then I just, it, it is, it's time consuming, you know, a lot of pictures to print. I do still scrapbook, but I take more of a simpler approach to it. So it doesn't take so long. And I, I can just still have all my pictures and whatnot, but I drift more into the card making more of, I love techniques. So yeah. I love just playing with products more than I do actually like making it to give. I just like to play. Yes. Yeah. So. And that's, that's what I always call it. I'm like, it's have a play, you know, just sit yeah. down with your stuff and have a play because I think that's when your best work comes out, you know, yeah. is when you just kind of have supplies at hand and you just go like it's, you don't have, it's harder with deadlines because you have a deadline, yes. um, but it's still, you can kind of have a play a little bit. So, you know, <laughs> now do you have a uh, different card lists for people you were mentioning? Like, you know, some, some are really reserved. Like you really have to think about it. Do you have like a, I know this person would never throw a card away and I know this person might, and this person definitely will. Do you have like different lists in mind? No, no. Because I don't send cards out as often. Um, <laughs> I used to do it more and I need to do it more. I think that, I think we all say that as we need to send our cards out more. And yes. I don't, I just, um, but I mean, there are some I reserve, like I know my mom, you know, yeah. is probably not going to throw a card away. And funny thing is apparently my sister doesn't either because okay. she sent me a text one day that had a picture. And she's like, look it, I was cleaning and it was a card. Like I, I just shook my head and closed my eyes. I wanted to cry. She sent me a card I made just eons ago. And I was oh. like, oh my gosh, look at all that glitter. Like that's when like glitter this and glitter that. And it was just I'm like, oh. <gasps> Oh my God, look at all that glitter. And it was, 
it was so so bad I'm like why why do you have that she she just laughs and so apparently my sister doesn't throw away cards either but i i mean i do i know if i'm like you know someone needs a card i'll be like oh well i'll give them this because i don't know how they are so i kind of have those mediocre type of uh cards set aside for for things like that but I mean, I do know off the top of my head a handful of people that would probably never throw it away. So, and crafters, you know, are never going to throw them away. I, oh, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They, I have a box of just cards that other people send me, so they're yeah. they're in there, and I look through them occasionally. But and for your sister to save a glitter card, like that's impressive because glitter back in the day was super messy. So that's like yeah. extra bonus points so for keeping a glittered card. Like, that's yeah, awesome. it was so bad. It was just. I'm like, please don't ever show that to anybody ever. <laughs> I'm glad you say that because I do the same thing. I look back and I'm like, what was I thinking? Like, why did I brag? Why did I put this on my blog? Why was I showing people this? So why did I send that out? <laughs> I'm with you though. So I, that's my part too, is like, I have boxes and boxes and boxes of cards um, that need to go somewhere. And I'm horrible about sending, I'm great at making them. It's just the, putting it in an envelope and writing in, you know, the whole, it seems like too much work after I've made the, I guess I'm exhausted from making the card. Yeah. <laughs> I tried setting up a little like shipping station and it, it's still just, I think my problem is I just have things spread out. Well, I shouldn't say the sh shipping station didn't last. The things got moved <laughs> around too much. And I think that is part of my problem is where, you know, envelopes are here and my mailing stamps are here. And then, Oh my, my card cushions are over there. And I just, it's like I there's too many spots to go to to <laughs> grab all the supplies and yeah. It just ended very you have a good collection. So you have a lot to draw from if you ever need a card quickly. Yeah. So that's a good thing. <laughs> now, how did you find Altenu? Uh there was so when I kind of first um got into card making, there was a store that I was working with and I I was still like really, I had no idea about anybody, to be honest, at that point. And I was like, well, let's, let's try Altenew. There was, I think it was like a bamboo something. I can't remember exactly, but I was like, well, let's try this. And I did a really simple embossed resist technique. Like that was it. Embossed resist, ink blend, slap it on a card. And then I was watching, you know, them come out with products and I was like, Ooh, that looks really cool. And that looks really cool. And so I just kind of, it, got my eye drawn to them. And then I just kind of watched things and watched the development and watched, you know, all the different things they started coming out with. So it was just like that one, one small stamp set kind of just got the whole ball rolling for me. And that's, it's nice to hear the different one though, because most people always say layering stamps, the layering stamps oh, were no. what pulled them in. So that's cool that you had like a one layer bamboo stamp. Yeah. Um, just a single you image. That I think is, I still have it, honestly. I, I, you know, I do de stash a lot, but when I go through it, I'm like, oh, wait, I got that like way back. I'm like, no, I'm keeping that. Just, I don't know. It's kind of sentimental. I probably, it's yeah. either retired or I might not touch it again, but I'm, I don't know. It's kind of weird. I, oh, it's the hoarder in me. <laughs> well, I'm worried. I haven't gotten rid of any. Some, the older ones go into um, totes and go into the closet, into storage, um, because I just am like, it's what if it's retired and I can't get it again and I really want to use it. So I have that paranoia, I call it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Stamp missing paranoia. So. <laughs> so what I know, you love the ink blending. Are we still on the ink blending? Are we still passionate about the ink blending? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That'll, that'll just never go away. Cause if all like, I love trying new techniques, but if all else fails, I ink blend. So yeah. it's just kind of my fallback. You know, I do love layering stamps. I do love the layering stencils, but of course that draws into ink blending. So yeah, yeah that'll, I think that's just kind of rooted into me now. I think that's just where I started. You know, some people, their their home base for them is watercoloring or yeah. coloring with with Copics. You know, they might do other things, but what drew them in was this. And that was ink blending for me. I ink blending was some of the first techniques I did and that's just uh, a go-to for me now. 
It's funny how uh, I was just talking to somebody about this the other day, you know, three years ago, we didn't have layering stencils. We had one layer stencils that we'd add colors to we'd put embossing paste on. But now we have these beautiful, um, like I used the billowing peonies last night, 12 stencils. Oh, I, I told Tasneem, I'm like, we need one with like 15. We need to do, we need to go over 12. Let's go over 12. Oh, pretty. <laughs> Because it's, you know, the more stencils, the better, right? I mean, it's just, they it's are so great. Well, there's a lot of times um, I, with the alt new stencils, like I, they're, they're gorgeous, all the different layers they create. But there's a lot of times, you know, because I know other people will get frustrated where they don't want to do that many layers. It's like, you don't have to. Nope. It looks gorgeous just with two layers, you know, and just add more depth with your ink blending. So I'm like, there's a lot of times I only use a couple layers and if I, but I have that option to do more if I want to. So, and your colors are just phenomenal. Like you always yep. pick the best color. I love your color combos. And it, a lot of times it's like, Oh, I wouldn't have thought of putting that together. And it's just, so do you just like start randomly picking colors or do you kind of go in with a plan? Like maybe this color would look good and grab or. Well, what's funny is, is a lot of times it's an accident. Um, nice. I, will, I will start with a base color and then I'll go in. I'm like, well, what does this color look like? I'm like, oh, nope, I didn't like that color. I'll add something on top of it and it creates a whole new color. So a lot of times I, it's just happy accidents a lot. It's just experimenting. It's that play. And then, but if you ask me to recreate it, it's not going to look the same. So <laughs> I, I think almost every card is a one of a kind because there's either yeah. you get a little ink where you're not supposed to and you put a, an embellishment or oh know, yeah did that a few times you're a little heavy handed fingerprints yeah oh well, that's where my sentiment's going <laughs> or you think you did so good on the stencil you didn't go off and oh wait you did right in the center of the card it, it yeah, never nice fails line right across yeah. yeah. Big sentiment, sometimes two, three sentiments, depending on the mm -hmm. uh, the uh, wildness of the ink blending. So to totally. Speak. <laughs> now, do you have any other crafty hobbies now? Um, I do. I don't do them as much, but there are things I still enjoy. Like, um, I, I enjoy cross stitch, and I used to do that all the time, and I um. I hadn't picked it up for quite a while. And then what refreshed me was Nicole Spore actually has kind of brought that back. She's been posting so much with her cross stitch. I was like, you know, I used to do that. And I dug out, I have this bag full of unfinished project projects. So I was like, I really do miss cross stitch, but there is a big difference from cross stitching now to cross stitching like 10, 15 years ago when I started. And yeah. that would be my eyes. My ah. eyes are not very good for cross stitch. Yeah. So I I still actually need to invest in one of those magnifying things that yeah. you put, put over. But I noticed that I was like, wow, my eyes are, I cannot see those little itty bitty tiny holes. <laughs> it's so hard, but I do love it. I, that is a, a favorite of mine. Um, crafting in general, just making, you know, little 3D projects. Um, my son is in middle school and he doesn't necessarily care if I make a project, but I like to spoil the teachers if I can get yep. the time to make it and things like that. So I still like doing that. Um, I'm not a sewer, but I would like to be. I think that'd be kind of fun. So that's an interest. And then, um, gosh, I don't know. I mean, there's tons of different things out there. I'm sure I dabbled in almost every little thing, but I don't do things consistently enough except for card making. I think a lot of people are like that. Like, I hope you try sewing. And we have beautiful fabric at Altenew as well. Yeah, that's yes. right. And I want to make a pouch bag. Like, that's another thing I see Nicole Spore make. It. It's just a zipper pouch. I'm like, that yeah. is so adorable. I got the big ruler. I went and bought the, the what do you call it? The, I don't know. Oh, the, blade. the rolly, the blade thing. Rotary, rotary. Rotary. <laughs> rotary. Let's see. I don't even know terms. But I went and bought all that. And I'm like, okay, I got the cutting mat. Yeah, and then it just, yeah, it got put in a drawer. <laughs> maybe winter is a good season for you. You could try sewing, maybe. Could be, could be. Yeah. It's The good thing about sewing is as long as you can sew straight, which I can't, but they sell yeah. guides to help you. Um, uh, it, it, You literally just sew straight, clip, sew straight, clip. It, you know, no, quilt. See, no, now that reminds me, um, yeah, I got to have my mom come and fix my sewing machine. There you go. My see? son got into it, and it's just, yeah, I'm like, 
mom, I'm 40 some years old. I'm like, mom, <laughs> we always do that no matter how old we are. Fix my sewing machine. <laughs> Jen keeps trying to convince me that it's easy to sew clothes. And I'm like, no, no, no. And she's like, but no quilting. And I'm like, quilting's so easy. So her and I have like challenged each other to do. So I need to make clothes and she needs to make a quilt. So like we kind of challenged that because she makes the oh. most beautiful clothes. Oh, I look I at it and I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> It looks right. like you bought that. Like it's amazing. So yeah. So maybe you can join in and and we can do some I quilting. Do I no, no, we I can do quilting. Do, I'll just do little bags. I'm mean, I'm a bag person. You can't have enough. I mean, we have so many things to store. So that would be perfect. Totally. That would be absolutely perfect. I you know talking about the treat boxes. I used to do that for my son and his friends when he was in like middle school, about your son's age. And I never thought they really paid attention to him. So one time I didn't make them and my son came home and he goes, Hey, Jacob was wondering what happened <laughs> with what? And he's like, we didn't get our little treat pouches for Halloween. Oh, like, oh okay. So I like threw them together. I think it was more about the candy than the, the 3d box. Um, but I made like little Frankensteins or something, you know, they had all those patterns back in the day. So yeah, well, it's, they I like think them. Um, <laughs> I think my my daughter got out of it because I started making her help me. Yeah, um, I would set her up with a die cut machine and have her go through and cut. And at first, it was like all exciting. And then as she got older, she's like, "I don't want to do this." <laughs> and I try to put my son to work, and he does like one or two, and he's gone. And and just with with how he is, he really doesn't care, you know. Yep. And he doesn't care about the Cretan side because special needs. So I was like. Of course, I don't have that push from the kids, so I forget. So I've actually been slacking the last couple of years. But this year, there's I'm like, no, I miss making those little boxes. And I and they don't have it. And that's the other thing, too, is like for my son's classroom, he doesn't have 25 kids in his class. He's got maybe 10. That's and then bad. maybe, yeah, maybe eight or 10 people. Uh, that work with him that I would want to make them for. So still around 20 ish if I do things, but um, not like it used to be with, with well, the, he's in special needs. So his, his stuff is always going to be smaller. And they move pretty fast. I mean, once you get your pattern of assembly oh, yeah. down your assembly line, they go pretty quickly. Yeah. My, yeah. My son always loved my craft room when he had a project, he'd come in and be like, Hey, do you have a stamp for this? And then I got pulled aside the other day. Um, he wants to make, so they're, because they're getting married next year, they're not spending money on gifts this year. So he said, can you help me make a scrapbook for Julia? And I'm like, Aww. yeah. So he's like, I have pictures and you know, we lay it out and we can go buy the book. Like he was so excited. Um, and, I'm, and I was like, oh, he wants the scrapbook. Weird. So almost That's 30 cute. and he wants the scrapbook. So I'm pretty excited about that. So it paid off, I guess, all these years of... <laughs> <laughs> the That's so cute. I love and, your, it. and your son is an artist too. Speaking of your son, he does amazing art. Like I've seen some of yeah. his pieces. Yeah, he's it's very specific. Yes. He does a lot of uh certain Mickey Mouse episodes, <laughs> his thing. And he he can name the episode and the season and everything. So there's certain ones. And then he likes to draw Cheetos bags. And he's got those, like, he doesn't even need an example picture. He has it so memorized that he can do all of that down to the UPC code. That's he amazing. can put all of that onto the bag. It is insane what I, he will do. And he's so young to have that talent at that age. I he's mean, been doing it for years. I yeah. hope he keeps up with it because it's amazing how he's, I mean, just progressed to this point. He's phenomenal. Oh, yeah. Yeah. More detail. And, yeah. I mean, it, he's had a slight break here. He's not, uh, the last couple months, he hasn't been really too obsessed about it. Part of it is um, he gets to be a perfectionist. So yeah. if one little line is off, the whole picture is garbage. Doesn't matter if he spent a whole hour on it, it's garbage. So I actually am kind of enjoying the break of pictures because when, when that, I mean, you know, we get mad when our project, we stick a fingerprint on it, but when he screws up, the whole world knows it and it takes a while to calm down. So I'm actually kind of glad that he's taking a break, but yeah, he's just progressed so much over the years with his pictures. It's, we have a collection downstairs and it's so cute to, and we don't need to date them because he's putting all the expiration dates on it. So 
We don't need to date it. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, does your daughter do anything crafty? Yeah, actually, she has been getting into, um, oh, what do you, she doesn't like when I use the word junk journaling, but it's like a collage journal yep. um, that she actually just got into within the last year. So she takes magazine pictures or I've been giving her stamps and stencils and she took some paint and I mean, it's, it's really cool what she mm -hmm. does in her journal. Yeah. That's so awesome. she got that. She, she used to draw, she loved drawing dresses for the longest time she did that. And she is also very artsy. Like, um, my son will take a, a Cheetos bag upstairs to her room and he wants her to draw it. And we've got some, I actually laminated them because she did them so good. And I was worried that Dalton would draw on it or rip it at some point. So we laminated them. She did so well. So yeah, she's, she's artsy. She's got her own little crafts and bracelets and all kinds of stuff that she likes to do. So. She'll have to draw a dress with a Cheetos bag on it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we And it's funny. We actually do have clothes that have Cheetos on them, but I, that's just not as fun, I guess, as... Um, <laughs> Are you a coffee person or is it the do? Does the do take I'm a place coffee, coffee? I'm a coffee and a do. Oh, coffee and a... Whoa, coffee and a do? Holy Toledo. Talk about the energy. Doesn't even phase me anymore. <laughs> It's like just goes through me. I don't even know where the caffeine is because it's not in my system. <laughs> I don't know. You need that jump start in the morning. It's like when your car goes, err, err. You need the yeah. coffee or something to get you over that, that yeah, first cold start, you know? <laughs> well, and of course, you get your first sip of coffee and it's like, don't talk to me. Don't look at me. My eyes aren't even open. I have a sign in my kitchen yeah. that says coffee first, people later. <laughs> Yeah. My, my, my husband even has learned um, not to talk to me before I have my cup of coffee because I'll snap. And, and then of course that just starts a, a snowball of an I'll argument. Like, just talk to me. Just let me wake up. Yeah. I need to get you the cup that has, it has an indicator level of when people can talk to you. Like, oh. like the top, I have one for my mom. The top line is like, don't mess with me. I'm starting to warm up and then you get to the bottom of the cup and it has, okay, talk to me now. <laughs> so, That's a good one. That would be pretty funny. Yeah. I'll have to get you one of those. <laughs> that would be good. Make sure it's on display for everybody to, to see. It'll have to be a clear one so they can see what level you're at of the coffee <laughs> in the morning so they know when it's safe to see. <laughs> Now, so earlier we were talking about the card making. What do you find are influences in your card making? Um, color palettes. Like there'll be just certain color palettes I see, whether it's Instagram or Pinterest, and I try to incorporate that into whatever I'm doing. Even if they're Christmas palettes. I mean, some of those Christmas palettes can be brought over to just even a dramatic look for your yeah. flowers or, or whatnot. Um, so definitely color palettes. Sometimes it'll be off of a technique. I see a really cool technique done. So that'll kind of jumpstart me a little bit. But yeah, I think kind of color like and it depends on I'm a very um, mood type of crafter yes. where if I'm just all the way in it, it's going to be bright and vibrant and crazy or other days I'm just kind of taking it slow, then it's going to be very soft and very simple. So I'm a very mood craft, moody crafter. I, yeah, I think mine does too. It comes out in that, you know, you kind of pick your, because you, you're, you're in a specific state when you pick your colors. So it kind of right. that dictates where you go from there. And I think a lot of crafters, right. maybe not realizing it, but I think a lot of crafters do that same thing. Because um, usually if you're like, haven't had enough coffee, you're not going to pick those bright colors. You're going to pick more oh, subdued no. colors because no. you're not raring to go. <laughs> Yeah, not quite there yet. Now, how do you think you've changed over? So we were we were laughing about the glitter. Um, how do you think you've progressed over the years of crafting and your card making? Have you stayed relatively the same or do you think you've changed a lot? Um, I think my stuff has changed. I mean, I still make, I, I always joke that I'm a snare drum amongst people because it was like my, my cards would just be like in your face and I've dialed it back. Like it's, I think I've kind of reined myself in. I think I'm kind of finding my footing when it comes to composing your card because you don't want the whole thing to be in your face. 
maybe you just want the background to be the focus and just put a small sentiment. So I think I'm fine tuning, I think is the word I want to use. I'm fine tuning everything. So I think it's, it's kind of gradually, you could still, some people are like, Oh, yep. That's a Mindy card. And I'm like, sorry. It just, you know, I burst out every now and then. So just kind of, that's a compliment there. Care about them. <laughs> yeah. Like sometimes you just got to not worry about composition and just, just do it. And yeah. then you can look back and be like, Hey, okay, that wasn't the best thing I've ever done, yeah. but I like this, or I should have just did this instead. And in my videos, I actually say that a lot. I'm like, well, this didn't work, but if you would do this, that would be better. So, and it's funny how, when you're editing, like you see things so differently. Cause I know when I edit, yeah. I'm like, oh, I should have done this here. Like I, it would have been better if I did this. It's funny how, when you yeah. see it through the other perspective, not just doing it, it's funny how many ideas come to you of what you should have done. Well, that's exactly the idea. It's like, oh, I should have put that there instead, but you don't think of it. You know, you're so kind of just in tune to what's in front of you that afterwards it's like, oh, you know, an embellishment there would have been really pretty, but cards. I, I don't redo, like if it didn't turn out exactly like I wanted in the video, I'm not going to redo it. It's like, no. you know what, if that is too much for some person to get as a card, I just send it to somebody who isn't going to care if it's yeah. too much. So I just kind of go with it that way. I don't know if any cards can be too much. I think they all have their beauty. There's all something unique put. and beautiful. I think some of them I may have gone overboard. On. <laughs> <laughs> That's not possible. <laughs> Do you have any favorite tools of the moment? Is there anything that's not leaving your desk? You just love it. I think most people would probably guess my number one tool is going to be my tweezers. I will remind people till I'm blue in the face or if they're struggling, I'm like tweezers, tweezers. Why don't you have tweezers in your hands? So yes, my tweezers <laughs> do not leave my desk. I probably have at least six pair in my little caddy I have over here. Um, and I can always have more because they get lost. Mm -hmm. So I, I, my tweezers are my number one tool. I mean, even, even over any stamping positioner, which I love and is one of the reasons I came back into card making was a stamping positioner, yeah. but nope, my tweezers, I cannot work without tweezers. I thought it would be blending brushes. I was surprised. I thought it would be the blending brushes because. Yeah, well, I mean, but I don't blend on every single card. True. That's kind of my thing. And I don't even stamp on every single card. You know, sometimes it's just a whole die cut card. Yeah. But those tweezers, they are used on every single card. I'm glad you said you have like six pairs because I think I have like six or seven and, and I'm always up for more because it's like having okay. another hand. You can hold things together. And then you can get in yep. and I've found my sentiments are straighter when I can use the tweezers from the top and put them on because I'm not holding mm -hmm. part of the sentiment. So it's easier to place your sentiments with tweezers. They are like yep. the can't live without crafting tool. They absolutely are. And, and there's a lot of people that can't get the hang of it. Like the reverse. I know there were some other tweezers out there where you, I don't even know, but I, I like the reverse tweezers. So you squeeze it and it opens. And there's a lot of people that that can't get that where, you know, they, they, they think the opposite of it. So they're like, oh my gosh, I feel klutzy with this or, you know, yeah. it doesn't feel right. And I'm like, it, it does take a while, you know, to get the feel of it and get used to it. But now can't, can't live without them. And that, I mean, like on die cut cards, like you're talking about, sometimes I just hold something, put it aside, let it dry. Then I can go back to it and you can still work on things. It's like my heat tool having legs and can warm up all by itself. I don't have to hold it. Like it's miraculous. <laughs> there are certain little things that are just miraculous and help us so much in crafting that you just can't live without. So yeah, yeah. I, but I was surprised. I really thought it would be the blending brushes. <laughs> yeah. Full of surprises. So what else would you recommend, say a beginner crafter? What do you think they need to really get started in stamping? Tweezers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a, a stamping positioner, because that does make a huge difference in, in anything. I mean, that is what drew a lot of, a lot of people back in. Yeah. When I did crafting with close to my heart, it was just clear blocks. Yes. And I got very, very frustrated. Now, sometimes I still use blocks, but... Yeah. 
the stamping positioner did change everything. And, and that helps me a lot. So definitely a stamping positioner, you know, things like just a really good pair of nonstick scissors, um, a brush, a paintbrush, I would say that can be good for lots of things. I add splatter to almost every card. So yes. that's why I add a paintbrush in there. <laughs> um, you know, your, your scissors, a craft pick of sorts, cause you'll need that for your die cutting and, um, your, your snips. I can't think of the word for it, but the snips, like I yeah. remember, <laughs> I remember getting my first pair of dies from a company and I got it and I was like, what do I, how do I do this? What am I doing with this? Like, I didn't even know how to get them apart. That's how horrible I was in the beginning. And she's like, Oh, you got to get the little snips and snip them apart. I'm like, really? Like that wasn't very fun. But, um, so yes, wire snips. Um, yeah. And then a tape runner and glue, you know, and, and a paper trimmer, of course, a good paper trimmer. So Kind of your good basic supplies to get you started, and then you can kind of build on that. So, what would you what if for an advanced crafter? Are there any tools you think besides tweezers they cannot live without? Because I, as an advanced one, you usually have tons of things. Is there anything you can think of that's like maybe not common in the craft room that folks need? Like I recommend um, a potty pad, which sounds funny, um, but for splatter because the box leaks. Um, oh, can leak when you spray, okay. um, the potty pad, I never heard that before. The potty pad <laughs> has the, the slippery stuff on the back and it soaks it in. So it doesn't leak. Huh. Um, and you can splatter on it and then you just fold it up and it's literally the size of a dollar bill and you put it in your drawer and then it's there for next time. So is there anything you can think of that normally wouldn't be in your craft room that would be good? Um, I don't know. I think a lot of my stuff is pretty. I mean, there's all your extra, um, your extra machines that you can get for different techniques. So I think, you know, if you're an advanced crafter, you can start looking at those other machines. Like you have a, be a better press system, you know, that yeah. I know Altenew does yes. better press plates now. So things like that or a glimmer machine. So those are more of kind of additional products you can purchase to start stepping up your game a little bit if you want to experiment with things. So those are more product based. I forgot to add an anti-static powder tool to the basic supplies list. Yeah. You got to have that. that one. Yeah. Sorry about that. And the paintbrush but works yeah, good for removing the extra. If you forget the anti-static powder tool, it removes the extra. Powder. Oh, yeah. so the paintbrush is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't, I think it's more tool based than it would be anything. I mean, I definitely do splatters. Um, and, and I don't, I, I don't think there's anything that can control the splatters no. when it comes to it. I have a big box and it still ends up outside of the box. So I don't think there's anything to really help with that. But yeah. um, I don't know. I think it's more product based if, if you were to start being an experienced crafter and looking to step it up a little bit. How are you on the hot foil? Are you a pro hot foil? Do you love the hot foils? I love it. I love it. I don't know if I'd say a pro. I mean, I, I got my method down pat, like everybody does theirs different and, and I do it my way. It's just something I saw somebody do. And I'm like, you know what? I like that. So I do it my way. It works for me. I get stunning results every single time. And yeah, I love it. My only problem is that I just don't have a lot of space in here. So I can't leave my machines out. If I want to foil or even the better press, I have to dig it out of my drawer, pull it up, make room yes. and pull it up. That's my other problem is like by the time I want to foil or better press, I already have products all over the place. So I would probably use it more if I had a, an actual room to yeah. work in and I could leave it out. But yeah, I do love foiling, foiling in any sorts. I love to do. It's just so fun. I, that's what I do like days of foiling. So I'll bring it out and like, I just mad foil all day. <laughs> and oh, then that's that a good way, idea. Yeah. That way it's like you have, and then you just have sentiments you can pick out and cause it is, it's a lot. I mean, you get it out, you plug it in, you heat it up, you get the foil, you get this and it takes a while. So I figure mass production days of everything foil. <laughs> My problem with that, like I tried that and I'll do my basic white, black, you know, I'll do different things, but then I'm like, no, I should use colored cardstock. But then if you're mass foiling, you're like, what color cardstock? I don't know what I'm going to be using. And then I, I talk myself out of it is what I end up doing. 
I always do white with rainbow. You can't go wrong. It goes with everything. Oh, I just, yeah. So yeah, I highly recommend the rainbow because any color cardstock you have, it's really going to go. So True. you are good to go with that. <laughs> and that's not like the glitter of the days. We get the shiny, but we don't have like glitter flying everywhere. We still get the effect. Right. So it's yeah, no glitter. It's really no a, glitter. Nice, a nice thing to go with. Do you have any tips or tricks that like never fail you in your card making? Um, a heavy block is probably one of my biggest, I don't know if I'd say tip or trick, but whenever I'm gluing, which of course involves my tweezers, but whenever I'm gluing things, uh, a heavy block, whether it's a pile of blocks or if you, you know, buy one specifically meant for that, like a paperweight, but a heavy block. And they just come in so handy when you want to glue things down. You can just set your block on top of it. So it lets the glue sit. And usually while that's doing that, I'm off working on something else. So yeah. those do come in quite handy. It's something that I didn't think I needed, but it, it definitely serves its purpose. And it's one of those things, like a lot of these things are things that allow you to work while something is drying or setting, mm -hmm. or a lot of the tools that are so invaluable to us are like almost another pair of hands in our office right. space so we can keep going and not have to wait patiently. <laughs> so <laughs> Absolutely. So do you have any fun facts um, to share? Any fun tidbits? um to share with our listeners and viewers <laughs> didn't think of that one uh i don't know i don't do anything there's nothing really fun <laughs> about me i i get up take the kids to school come home and make cards i really don't do much else although i mean i i will take breaks throughout the day you know i have a lunch break that i do um or an afternoon nap i sometimes do those <laughs> but I'm a Marvel fanatic. Like I love the Marvel and DC movies. That's totally my obsession. Well, that and Supernatural. People may have heard me say it before, but Supernatural has been one of my all-time favorites go to, but I'm a DC and Marvel lover too. What's your favorite? Like fun what's, your, what's your favorite Marvel? You, have um, you know, you I keep going back. Well, it is a hard one to pick. And I do keep going back to the Avengers, just just the first Avengers. Like, I don't know. That one, I just love it. And then, of course, in, uh, Infinity Wars. But I can never finish it. Even if I'm not paying attention, I cannot finish Infinity Wars because I do not want to see him die at the end of the movie. Oh, so I stop watching. But gotcha. Avengers is probably my my favorite. Very cool. See, I didn't know that. So see, fun fact. That's very cool. Marvel's, <laughs> Marvel's popular with a lot of folks. Um, I haven't seen them. <laughs> well, you know, and it took me a long time to realize when I started getting into it, I didn't realize I never followed comic books. So I didn't yeah. know there was a Marvel in a DC world. So my friend would try and explain it to me. And I was like, what? Why? They're just comic books. And then as I fell in love with them, I decided I you know, kind of following it and the storyline and, and whatnot. And then I just kind of laughed because I saw last night, Netflix dropped the DC movies. And I was like, I am never going to get my work done. How am I supposed to work when they dropped all these on Netflix? So it's a miracle that I am not sitting in front of my TV right now. Just say that because it's been a while since I've watched them. See, so everybody, she gave up Marvel to be with us today. So that's a that's a compliment. <laughs> see, see, <laughs> it is hard when Netflix releases something like that because you just want to. I remember uh, Orange is the New Black. I used to wait until it all released and then watch it like the whole night, like and stay oh, up like, yeah. all night watching it just because it was like that's you know so hard. It is. It's because you're like you just want to watch it, but but yes, you were fun. You were just fun in general. So just so you know. <laughs> You were just fun in general. So. We well, don't do much else. <laughs> Might wear a funny hat once in a while, but. Oh, yeah, you have to do that. Like Christmas, New Year's, like different things like that. At Easter, you got to have the ears. Like, I, yeah, you got to, you got to have fun. Oh, I even have reindeer antlers. I forgot. I bought them for purposes like this, and there's completely forgot I bought reindeer antlers. Well, by the time they watch me, I would be past Christmas, but it would have been fun. We'll have to remember next time we'll wear funny hats. Yes. yes. <laughs> so the next interview that we have with Mindy, we'll all be wearing funny hats. <laughs> yes. 
I guess. and that'll I mean, save from us having to do our hair. So I, I have curly curly Q ones with big stars that shake for New Year's. Oh fun. Yes, I've had some of those before. Yeah, we get the crazy alien ear alien ones too. You gotta have fun. I mean it's just it's just fun. It just adds a little bit of a yes. little bit of fun in there. I used to have my favorite hat when I was little was a goofy hat. I got at Disneyland that was basically goofy and a hat and it had his little oh, teeth hanging wow. down in the front. I think I still have it, but he lost one of his ears. I don't know how he lost an ear, not a tooth, but he lost an ear. So, but <laughs> well, what's funny is like my son for the longest time loved hats and they not like normal hats. Like they had to be weird. Like he has a big, huge sun hat. He had, I, there's a, oh, um, it's like a cowboy hat, but it's all sequins and green. And then it's got a gold clover on the front. Like he loves the crazy hats and he has, I bought him. I found it on Amazon. It's a goofy hat, but it's literally like Goofy's hat. Yeah. But it's huge. Like, it's giant. And then it's got the long ears. They're super long. I should have worn that. Oh, Next time, wear Gosh. the Goofy hat. Well, at, even at the end, we can just put the Goofy hat on. And, yeah, I'll see if I can find my one ear Goofy. We can have Goofy. <laughs> oh, I should have done that. I, it's very hard for me to be completely serious. Like, I don't. Yeah. I don't dress up. I do, you know, I have nice sweatshirts, but sweatshirts most of the time. And yeah. like, I just, I'm not that super serious. I like to have fun and I like to, you know, I mean, yes, funny hats may not be professional looking, but I bet somebody's smiling, looking at you going, wow, she's wearing that. <laughs> yes, I am. You go girl. You know, a lot of people are going <laughs> And I think that's the thing that I think you reach an age where like comfort overtakes most, <laughs> most of it, yeah. you know, and especially working from home, you know, you can be comfortable. You don't have to dress up because you don't see people really. So, <laughs> well, and that, that's it. It's like, you don't leave the house to see people that often, you know, I mean, grocery shopping or, you know, I, I did go on a trip recently, but it, it's like, just gotta have fun with it. You know, who else am I going to do this to? So yeah, got to have fun with it. You just can't. I just can't be serious all the time. I think it's that's every day. You got to have a little fun built into the day. Just kind of keep it going, you know. So, yeah, absolutely. So, yes, but you are totally fun. You are like just fun. So <laughs> when you said there's nothing fun about you, you're just fun. You're just mm -hmm. fun. And speaking of fun, we have a game we play. Um, <laughs> <Start> nervous. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm getting out my fidget toy. It's washi tape that I sit here and play with while we're talking. Um, so another good tip. Washi tape can be a fidget toy. There we go. It is. <laughs> I've got like half of it rolled out. Okay. All right. So we play a random word game and somehow, some way, and we can do the six degrees of Kevin Bacon uh, to connect this to crafting. That's allowed. Okay. <laughs> so... Okay, so your first word, let's see what the random generator has come up with. We have define. Define. Yes. So I have to put that, I have to relate that to paper crafting? Somehow, yeah. <laughs> Can you define the terms of the assignment? There you go. See, that's a good one. That is a good one. I think that is absolutely perfect. Okay, so this one will be easier. The second one is a lot easier. Product. Product. Which product would you like me to use today? I mean, that could be used for anything, really. Good gravy. And I, I have actually, product everywhere on my desk. I mean, I can go on with that one. Products everywhere. <laughs> I'm buried in product. Yes. That would be fun, though. There's lots of products. <laughs> <laughs> All the products. How does that, that have to clean do? it up? I don't care. <laughs> and the final one is treatment. Treatment. Yeah. I need to give my gel plate a treatment to clean it. <laughs> Does that work? <laughs> I was thinking. I don't know what like, else is a treatment. I was thinking of it like, uh, like a technique, like a, you know, like I'm going to do this treatment to the paper. <laughs> like, I don't know if that works. Ooh, that doesn't sound very fun, though. <laughs> Can watercolor be a treatment? Like you know, like. <laughs> 
Oh, it's very serious. I, I don't know if that's a thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> you did fabulous, especially with Define. That was a rough, that was a rough Ooh. one. Like, I mean, yeah. It's <laughs> only three. I can survive that. And they weren't too bad. We've had some come up that I, I don't know how you get from A to B, but people do it. It's amazing to well, to see how different people connect the words. It's it's really fun. Well, and apparently I'm playing Jeopardy because I was like giving everything back to you in a question. So apparently I was in Jeopardy. Well, that's good though, because if you're ever on Jeopardy, you're already thinking in the form of a question. <laughs> yeah. We can start giving people a little buzzer so that they can bring in the, the random word generator. Does well, it work? Does it not? Did you pass? <laughs> yes, you passed with flying colors. You did amazing. <laughs> and kept it fun, which is always good. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us today. It's always fun to have a chat and catch up and see what's new that's going on and check in on other older things, too, that we always kind of talk about like techniques and stuff but it's always fun to check in and see what's going it's on fun. so thank you so much for joining us today yes yeah, so thank you so much for having me i've never done a podcast before so check that off my box so thank yeah. you so much for also for inviting me and it's always so fun chatting with you thank you same to you like i could chat with you all day it just it's we always yeah. have fun we always have a good laugh when we have our interviews for things and so it's always a fun a fun meet. <laughs> yes, that's great. Yes. And thank you so much to our viewers and listeners for joining in with us today. Make sure to join us next month to see who the amazing guest will be that joins us. And don't forget all of our crafty friends to craft your life. We'll see you all next month in the new podcast. Bye guys. Follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcast, Google Podcasts, and everywhere you can find podcasts to keep up with every new episode. Email us at support at altenew.com with your feedback. And don't forget to craft your life. Hello, crafters. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching.